Hey, hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well today. Let's take a look at the first topic in international economics, which is why do countries trade? And I love the, top, the, the title here because it's just so simple. Like, why would countries be interested in trading their goods for other goods? And when it boils down to it, you know, economists have recognized seven different reasons or gains from trade. And a gain would be something that would make your particular economy better. Right? And, and just to lay it out there simply, international trade is the exchange of goods and services between countries. I know that sounds kind of obvious, but it's a nice little clear definition for you. International trade is the exchange of goods and services between countries. And if you've been following these series all along, or if you have me in class, you know I talk about, in macroeconomics, I talk about these macroeconomic bubbles that exist on top of each country around the world. And in macroeconomics, you study what's happening inside that particular bubble. And you talk about allocation of resources and the firms that can, can best produce a good should be the ones that are producing it. And the best farmers for corn should be producing corn. And the best farmers for uh, wheat should be producing wheat. But now we're going to take those, those macroeconomic bubbles and see what happens when they interact. And what happens if maybe in one macroeconomic bubble, those corn producers are better at producing corn than the corn producers in the other macroeconomic bubble, even though the corn producers in the second macroeconomic bubble are the best in their country. But when you open up your borders and you trade freely between nations, all of a sudden those other farmers affect the farmers in your own macroeconomic bubble because if they're not competitive against the other corn producers in the other macroeconomic bubble and people can buy the other corn from outside of their own macroeconomic bubble, then your farmers are in trouble because they're not going to be able to produce. And then people's lives get affected greatly. And when people's lives get affected greatly, and that in an economic sense, those corn farmers in, in, in the one macroeconomic bubble that are no longer competitive are going to start complaining to whom? Just like children, they're going to complain to their parents. They're going to complain to their governments. And then the governments are going to say, whoa, wait a second, maybe we should protect our children, our farmers, our corn farmers, and put up a tariff to protect our, our corn farmers from the other macroeconomic bubble. But the problem is now, if you protect your own farmers, the people in your country are actually going to be forced to pay a higher price for corn because now they have to buy it from their domestic uh, corn producers. Okay, so the first thing I'm just going to lay out here is what are the gains? Like, why would it be better for a country to trade with another country? Okay, well, the first thing here is pretty simple. Lower prices, right? The main goal from trade is the ability to buy goods and services at a lower price than the domestic one, right? Consumers are able to buy, if you trade, less expensive products, and the producers are able to purchase less expensive raw materials and semi-manufactured goods. And this is you know, pretty straightforward, and this could be for any reasons. In my corn example, if, hey, if, if the other people can produce corn better, then it would be better for your uh, people in your country to buy the other corn. Um, but, but in, in, in all lower prices, right, on average in the long run, lower prices will be advantageous to your particular consumers because they're going to use less of their income to buy a particular good. And if you think about the cost of production, if your producers can, can, can buy a factor of production, some sort of raw material from another country at a lower price, then they're going to gain as well. So lower prices is one of the re, one of the gains that happens as a result of trade. The second one's pretty obvious, I think, greater choice, right? International trade enables consumers to have greater choice of products. And if you think about this, I like to think of it as like really tangible things. You know, if you are really into the outdoors and you live in Chile and Doite is a very reputable brand of outback, outback or outdoor like camping gear. But the thing is, it's not actually the best in the world, right? Um, what is better, a lot of the products that come out of the United States, maybe from Patagonia, maybe from North Face, maybe from Mountain Hardware, those are U.S. companies. And European companies as well are super good at making outdoor gear. So if, you're, if, you're consu if you open up to international trade, then your consumers are going to have access, um, a better choice in the products that they buy. All right. Differences in resources, the third reason. Different countries obviously possess different uh, resources. And there are some resources that a country may need but do not have, right? They may need them in order to produce other products and so have no option but to import the commodities they lack. So this is a thing where a country doesn't have really what it needs. 
So what's the solution? They will need to export goods or services in order to earn foreign currency and so they can buy the required resources. So one thing to other, a little layer to put in there, in international economics, get in your head, imagine a world where only, every country only has their own currency. It's really helpful. I know that dollars are prevalent all over the world and, and, and euros are prevalent all over the world and, and there are, there's, every country has these other currencies. But if you think that way, it's going to get really confusing. You got to think about a world where everybody just has their own currency. So Chile, the Chilean government only has Chilean pesos. And as a result, if they want to buy, let's say, oil from abroad, they don't have, they, they don't have dollars, right? Do, oil is set, sold in dollars. So Chile's got to figure out a way to get dollars. Well, they have copper, so they could sell their copper for dollars, get the dollars, then use those dollars to buy oil. Okay, so because both copper and oil are priced in dollars. So it's, it's much more complicated than that, but it's really nice if you think of it that way because it becomes much clearer in your head. Okay, so differences in resources. But a lot of that has to do with being able to buy foreign currency, right, in order to buy the required resources. Okay, the fourth reason is economies of scale. And what this, it sounds really fancy. It's really not that complicated. Scale, just think about scale as large. The larger you get, the more efficient you become. The larger you get, the larger your scale, the more efficient, economically efficient, you will become. So when producing for an international market, as well as a domestic one, the size of the market and thus demand will increase. And this means that the level of production and the size of production will also increase. And when this happens, bigger firms are more efficient at, it's really simple, bigger firms, the bigger the firm, the more efficient it is at producing a particular good because they have people who are specialized, more likely to be specialized in one particular aspect of production. So what that means is in order to produce a car, let's say, if, if you have a small firm, then many of your workers will have to do multiple tasks, and they're not going to be experts at any one of the tasks. But if you're a large car firm, you could have a person who is just responsible for one particular task, and they are masters of that task. And as a result of being masters of that task, right, they're going to be more efficient at doing it. So that specialization, what happens is there's economies of scale create this specialization, um, and that, that increases the overall efficiency. And, you know... The, so, so don't get lost in this like very vague idea of economies of scale. I don't, I don't know. That, that whole term I really find a little bit sort of misleading. Just think about it as the bigger a firm is, the more efficient it is because the more resources it has and the more specialized its particular people can be. And that will mean lower prices because costs will be lower. Okay? So next one, increased competition. International trade may lead to increased competition as domestic firms compete with foreign firms, right? And any times this happens, any time there's competition, there'll be greater efficiency. And any time there's greater efficiency, that means that consumers will be paying less for a particular product, right? It also means that there will be the quality, most likely the quality of the goods that you, your consumers will be able to buy will also increase. All right. Next one, more efficient allocation of, of resources. When international trade takes place freely without government intervention aha, or interference, then the countries that are best at producing certain goods and services will produce them, and they will be able to produce goods and services at the lowest cost and take advantage of their efficiency. This just is really just really simple macroeconomics, but on an international scale, right? The more efficiently allocated the resources are in a particular country, the, the, the better it is for the country. Well, now just take that country and just expand it out to the world. If you think of the world without borders for a second... You want, an, uh, you want a, an efficient allocation of resources globally. So make the people that are best at, the people that can produce steel the best, produce the steel and, and provide it to the world. The people who can produce coffee for the, for the least, produce coffee and produce it for the world, right? And that way, international trade does do that. There's a gain to the overall well-being of the, of the world by the fact that those who are good at something are are doing the task that would be best. And as a result, there's a very, very much an efficient allocation of resources on a global scale. And then the last one here is a source of foreign exchange, which means money, right? International trade enables countries to obtain foreign exchange or currency. And if you live in the United States, 
you may not be quite aware of this because the world, because your world is in dollars and, 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 and many of the products in the world trade in dollars. But let's say you live in Nicaragua. I lived there for four years and they have something called the Cordoba, which is, which is their currency. But it's really not, it's not a currency that can be exchanged in the foreign market. And the reason for that is it's simply a, a currency that is pegged to the dollar. It really is the dollar with a different with a different look to it, a Nicaraguan look to it. So if Nicaraguan, a Nicaraguan firm wants to go out and buy, and I used this example for Chile earlier, but Nicaragua is a better example because you can't take your, your Nicaraguan Cordobas and, and take them to the international market. No one will buy them. So the, the government in Nicaragua can't sell its own Cordobas on the international market. They need So if they want to buy oil or any other sort of resources that's... that's, that's, um, that's priced in dollars, they have to go, they have to sell something. They have to export something. And what Nicaragua exports a lot of is coffee. They export a lot of sugar. And as a result of exporting the sugar, which is also priced in dollars, they receive dollars. Now they have the currency. They basically exchange their exports. They exchange their sugar for money, currency. And as a result, they can then go buy their oil. So because they don't have a convertible currency, no one will take it. They got to take one of their own products and sell it in order to get the foreign exchange in order to go buy whatever they need that's priced in dollars. Okay, so for developing nations, um, international trade is really critical because they need to be able to acquire foreign currencies in order to stay competitive in the in the international market. Okay, so all of these things, these seven points, right, are 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 sort of I think anyway obvious gains of trade, and so. As you think about these things, right, you have to start thinking about, but these create problems locally. It's all good and fine if the world has a better, lower price for corn. But if that's putting your corn industry, all your corn farmers out of business, that's real pain by real people in your country. And the government might not want to protect that, might want to protect those people. And the result is going to be government intervention. And anytime there's government intervention, you have less allocation of resources or more inefficient allocation of resources. Okay, so there you go. Gains from trade. I hope you found this video to be helpful and we'll talk to you in a bit.